Humanity has searched for the source of immortality since the dawn of time. Even the oldest story known to man, the Epic of Gilgamesh, revolves around the search for everlasting physical life. It is often a cursed endeavor, lined with the ultimate realization that death is an essential part of human existence, and that those who run from it usually meet an end far worse than what they were running from. We as humans are now met with that same paradox. We are once again searching for the Holy Grail, searching for a way to cheat death, and we are searching for it by way of uploading our consciousness. In theory, our minds are nothing more than data and program responses to stimuli. The same way computers store data and use that data to spit out certain outcomes within defined parameters, our brains process the world around us and allow us to behave and react according to previously learned behaviors. So with that being said, it should be theoretically possible to at least mimic and map out the quote-unquote code that our brain operates on, right? That's assuming that those parameters and responses are in fact stored on the human hard drive of the brain. But is that the case? Is the human soul something that can be mapped? Is your sense of self limited only to the defined programming from your mind? Is what makes you, you simply the sum of your parts of your biology? These are the questions that must be answered first in order to delve deeper into the prospect of uploading our minds. There is a belief system called physicalism which is that the real world consists only and simply of the physical world. This doctrine says that everything that exists is physical and that there is no spiritual or supernatural presence in our universe. This belief would suggest that the soul is something tangible and would assume that there would be a way to map every channel and recess of the human consciousness. In order to apply this philosophy to the realm of human consciousness, we first need to define what consciousness is. Consciousness refers to your sense of self and the awareness of the world around you. It is your identity and your sentience. It allows you to navigate the world around you and separate yourself from a hive mind. Take for example an AI like the Sophia bot. On the surface, she looks complex enough and responds to questions just like any other human would. But she is a program. She does not know why she responds the way she does. She did not choose to say the words she did. It was chosen for her. This clearly is not consciousness. However, to a physicalist, there wouldn't be too much of a difference. There would simply be one more layer left to map, the layer that allows you to choose and gives you your individualism. But let's suspend the philosophical for a little bit. Let's talk about what exactly would need to be mapped. The human brain is essentially a fleshy supercomputer and the world's most complex biological mechanism. It houses 86 billion neurons which process and send out information to the rest of the body. 100 billion neurons each fire off about 5 to 50 action potentials every second, which allow you to process your environment, your balance, your senses, and what actions you might take according to this information. Our brains actually share quite a bit of similarities with computers. For instance, just like you would have a file explorer on your computer where you can go to access old information and files, our brains have a hippocampus which stores and processes episodic memories that we can go and access whenever prompted. The neocortex and amygdala also store other types of information and memories such as semantic memories which are general facts and information about the world. Just like computers use zeros and ones to process that information and act upon it, we use hormones and neurons and axons to do the same. So since we share so many similarities and mechanics between our brains and computers, it should be possible to build a computer complex enough to house all the same information in someone's brain, right? Well that's where we run into a lot of roadblocks, and it simply is not that easy. Scientists have started working on progress to successfully map brains, starting with a roundworm which they were able to fully map in less than a month. A roundworm is a tiny parasitic creature, meaning orders of magnitude more massive maps are needed to get to the level of complex animals. Where complications come in is with the sheer size of data needed to store these maps. For example, a mouse's brain is a thousand times bigger and requires an exabyte of data, roughly a billion gigabytes. Mapping an entire human brain would need a data set that is a further 1,000 times larger, a zettabyte, which is comparable to the amount of digital content generated in a year by the planet Earth. It's also worth considering that this data set would only be a map of the neural connections, not taking into account the far more complex systems that work through the multitude of connections. There are infinite nuances past just observing the structure. Theoretically, to not just map but actually upload a consciousness, you would need a software complex enough to host this consciousness and then run it in real time. 
I want you to think about how slow your computer gets when you have a lot of tabs open. And then I want you to think about just how many processes are going on every second in the brain of a human. The human brain can process 11 million bits of information every second, but our conscious minds can only handle up to 40 to 50 bits of information a second. We may one day expand this by increasing our conscious bandwidth with something like the Neuralink, but that is a topic for another day. So the prospect of uploading your consciousness in the sense that we hope to and understand it is in every sense of the word a monstrous undertaking that we currently do not and most likely will not for hundreds of years have the capacity to do. While it's true we are constantly innovating in the way of data storage, there may simply never come a time where we are able to store the data of every human's brain. While the idea of living in a robot body sounds like an awesome sci-fi fantasy, let's explore a little bit of why that might be a terrible idea. The movie and anime Ghost in the Shell asks the relevant question of, would your new uploaded consciousness be the real you, or simply a copy? If you were to download your brain and then upload it to a new body, would you still be the same person as before? This is one of, and perhaps the most important, mind-melting spiritual ramification of something like uploading your mind. There are simply too many unknowns about the reality of consciousness, and about the reality of something like a soul. However, new discoveries are happening every day, and new innovations are always just over the horizon. So who knows what really is possible, and what may be reality very soon. But that's going to do it for the video today, so if you enjoyed, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I'm always covering new science and technology news, so if any of this piqued your interest, be on the lookout for new videos from my channel. I'll see you in the next one.